Hello there, how you doing everybody? It's uh, Tuesday the 9th of February 2010 and it's about half past seven in the evening and uh, I just want to deal with a couple of things if I could. The first thing is an apology. Uh, just very quickly, uh, when you give out information on this, uh, this is my belief about this YouTube, I think you should be, you should try and be as accurate as you can. And if you find out at a later date you've given out wrong information, you should retract it immediately. And, you, and if if it if it's directed against somebody, you know the the actual posting, you should apologise immediately. And I want to apologise to Professor John Fitzgerald from the SRI. That's the Economic and Social Research Institute in Dublin. And I always believed, and no one ever contradicted me, that uh, the SRI was uh, entirely a government body. And it turns out that that is not the case, that it's a quasi semi-state body, that it gets between 35 and 40 percent of its funding from the state. It's a sort of a, an interdepartmental grant, a government grant, and the rest is earned from independent work that the SRI does. So uh, in future I will not be referring to the SRI. They will not enter into my calculations because as I say the, there's a big enough delay delay responsibility for the debacle we find ourselves in. There's a big enough cohort. There's the government, there's the, the general media, and there's the church. Uh, and I always believed, as I say, that the SRI was part of that government. It turns the government, uh, a totally government body. It turns out that it's not. So unless it's something of major importance and they're directly involved, then I will not be referring to the SRI again. Uh, that's number one. The second thing I see is that uh, <coughs> one of our commenters, uh, Dolly Mix, gave out that uh, about two weeks ago, ten days ago, she warned us that uh, a foreign bank was about to pull out of the Republic, and sure enough, it's come to come to pass. So we have to thank her for the post and her little commentary. Uh, it was about a week ago, ten days ago, and she hinted at this that it was going to happen and sure and sure shooting it's happened 750 people are going to lose their jobs and the only thing I can say about those 750 people that work in that, that bank the, there's no chance there's totally no chance within the next 10 years of those people or 15 years of these those people ever getting a job in banking in Ireland that is not going to happen so they'll have to either retrain for another job or they'll have to leave this company or whatever but there's no way in banking they're going to get another comparable job. Maybe a tiny number, mate, but I'm talking about the bulk of them. So it's a sad day, 750 people, that's a colossal number of people. And we, we've already had the possibility of uh, 1,700 people last week. These are just colossal figures. And this is happening just on a daily basis. This is going to mount up. Uh, as I said, by the end of this year, beginning of next year, to the beginning to the middle of next year, it will be a true crisis point in Irish society. It's going to be unbelievable. Um, so that's really that. The other thing I want to talk about is I want to talk, I'm going to put a post up to it. I'm going to put links so you can have a way read of these, by the way, all these articles and various things. Uh, I put a link up to the SRI to the, to the accounts if you want to read it, see where they get their funding from. I put a link up to the, to the latest thing on the, on, on the jobs losses. And uh, this this uh, is just a little article about Europe and it seems that uh, it's tomorrow's Financial Times but they put the posting up tonight online and you can have a read of it and uh, just basically says that Europe is uh, both Britain and Sweden uh, have broken away from the main European thinking about this and Europe and Sweden are demanding that the IMF deal with the Greek problem that both of them are saying that they're more experienced the IMF are more experienced so that does not go well for Greece because if the IMF is brought in I can assure you that there will be thousands of jobs lost public and sunny state sector but uh, sector jobs gone so as I said I put the little link up to it, it it's worth the reading all right but it's just it's sad reading really at the end of the day because no matter what way they seem to have got themselves in a terrible pain there it's it seems to be a worse case scenario than Ireland just slightly worse than us and I wish them the best. 
the final thing I want to talk about is um, I want to talk about I want to, this is to the modern mystic <coughs> and uh, Nick and uh, he put a potion up I think it was early this morning and maybe last night and it was to do with uh, peak oil and the conspiracy business about peak oil and how it has come about and all this and <coughs> I just want to say Nick just a couple of things uh, <coughs> like I say I, I think that when, when we come on like we're older lemons here and there's a lot of young people we, we would be talking to a lot of young people who are very impressionable and they would listen to what in particular what you would say you, you, you're you like a, a guru to these people and I, I think you have to be able to stand over what you're saying now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something out here and I want you to explain it because it flies in the face of what you said and what you're saying is basically that you don't believe there's a conspiracy between the big oil companies to control the price of oil and you don't believe in the theory of the seven sisters type thing you know that that's a manifestation of it. The, the, by the way the seven sisters thing it, it, it's just an analogy it, it was never really seven sisters as such it may have been for a short period of time in the, in, in the latter part of the 20th century but the reality is we still have oil multinationals and they're still out and acting out that role and just explain this to me this is a list I'm going to put up a screen capture for it okay and it's a list from uh, the global 500 top 500 companies in the world and this is the top 10 and this is from CNN and it's called Fortune 500 right and it's the world's biggest companies to th at the end of 2009 and they are number one Royal Dutch Shell oil company number two Exxon Mobil oil company number three Walmart stores no number four BP oil company number five Chevron oil company number six Total oil company number seven Conoco Phillips oil exploration company eight ING group no number nine Sinopec oil company ten Toyota Motors no so Nick how do you square what you're saying with the fact that out of the top ten biggest companies in the world seven of them are oil companies do you think that's an accident do you think that's an accident that these companies have all ended up seven of them not two of them or three of them or four of them or five of them or six of them seven of them out of the top five biggest companies in the world four are oil companies do you think that's an accident I don't think so Nick so I don't know would you explain it because the way I see it Nick you, I, I think you have a, you have a your overlay on the world is very strange you see the world as benign and, and sort of uh, what would you call it Al almost uh, childlike I think I mean, I, you know I don't see it like that you know I see it as a conspiratorial playground for the elite you know I see the whole world as a triangle you know I've, I've gone into it you've never described how you, how you view it like what? What is your what? What is your view of the world? How do you see the world? Like I'm open about the hymn sheet that I sing off. My hymn sheet's very very simple. Triangular world, elite at the top, which represent about uh, one fifth at the top. And the rest are all the workers and all the lump and proletariat and dysfunctional classes and the middle classes and out of that elite at the top within that there's a super elite made up of government and corporate entities and they control everything like wh where are you coming from what are you saying I'd like to hear and I'd like to hear what, you wa what your comment is about those seven how can we end up with seven out of the ten 
biggest companies in the world being oil companies. Accident? I don't think so, Nick. I don't think that's accidental. That's serious design. Ser